What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Black Belt Business Podcast. I'm your host, Elliot Marshall, and it is my goal with each episode of this podcast to share the stories, strategies, tactics, tools, and resources that will help you establish or grow your martial arts school. The Black Belt Business Podcast is brought to you by Easton Online. You can find all of our digital courses, martial arts curriculums, and resources designed to help you enhance your business at easton.online. So without further ado, let's jump into the episode. All right, guys, what's up? We were just, uh, how are you guys? Doing good. 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 Wonderful. We were just talking about coffee for a second, and let's talk about it. Fips, how much coffee do you drink in a day? I drink a ton of coffee. Uh, yeah, okay, give, give us a, like a... So, a, a so Jordan, Jordan knows how many cups go into a pot. I actually don't know how many cups go into the pot that we have, but, you know... It's, and it's hard to say because my wife and I drink from the same pot. So it's like we have this craft, but I'm going to make at least two crafts in the day. And that's that's just coffee. You, that's not all my caffeine okay, consumption. Do you evenly drink that two crafts of coffee you, between you and your wife? No, no. You're no. way more? Yeah, she's like a cup and a half a day. Like a, a So you a have cup. two crafts of coffee a day. Is it like this size, the craft? Yeah. Okay. I bet that's about eight cups. Yeah. No, seven. Oh, it's seven? Seven, yeah. It doesn't feel well, like Well, I was seven. close. Yeah. Yeah. I was close. So, I mean, so if she drinks, let's say, half of that one, mm-hmm. you have, just from coffee, ten and a half cups of coffee. That seems that seems like a lot. I want to say it's closer to eight, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, two of them is 14. Eight. She gets four. Yeah. But she has half of one. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's ten, dog. It could be. And then you have more caffeine. <laughs> yeah, I have like more when, caffeine. When? Doing what? Tea and... Uh, well, you'll it's, get usually, it's usually like an energy drink, like a healthy energy drink. But There's there, no such thing. There's no <laughs> such thing. Well, there, there is. There's energy drinks that are not based in sugar. So it's mostly just caffeine, 110 milligrams to 200 milligrams of caffeine okay, in a drink. And on. then it's vitamins. And then it's Pause. minerals. Pause. Pause here before we get into real conversation. Okay, this is like uh, diet soda. Mm, diet it's, soda. It's not like diet is soda. It's slightly better for you than actual soda. Correct. But it's not. It's not healthy. Correct. It's not diet soda though. Okay. Well, you know I'm exaggerating. That's all I ever fucking do, <laughs> right? So it's not quite that bad, you know. But it's not like. Please don't. Just we shouldn't use the word healthy. I will use the word neutral. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think on this? Well, I don't know. It depends on what's in it. Exactly. All, all, uh, it depends on what's in it. I mean, if it's not like, if it's not got anything in it that's you know screwing up your your biomarkers or it has no or anything like no, that. Nothing. Like, I'm sure there's some color. Yeah. In so it. done. Hold red. Me. Any red number four over. I don't yeah, think there's red me. number four. Listen, when I get home, I'll pull one out of the fridge. I'll take a fi- po- so, photo yeah. of the of the bat the label, and we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll post discuss. it on Easton online. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll Perfect. post it on Easton online so Perfect. everyone can at least follow up. When this yeah. podcast goes out, we're, we'll try to remember to post it. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's go. Um, man, people have really been enjoying our talks lately. We've been getting really good feedback, right? So let's stick in the basics. Okay. Right. Let's just stick in the basics of like, okay, how do you do this? Okay. Like super simple because, um, when, uh, when the world tells you they like something, you you just keep doing that. Right. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Why why go? Yeah. That's helpful. Let's go to your department, Jordan. Okay. I mean, basic dog. Don't, don't, don't get crazy. Right. Don't not. How do you, where do you start? With a basic good kids program. Mm. Where do you start with a basic good kids program? I'm about to open an academy. I mm-hmm. want to have a good kids program. Mm-hmm. How do I do it? I think that you need to have a curriculum. Okay. Ensure you have a curriculum so you're not just flying blind. Um, I think that every kids class should have a training first philosophy. I think the most fun thing for kids when it comes to jujitsu is the ability to play, discover, and explore. 
And by prioritizing their training time and making sure that they get the opportunity to do that, I think is what is going to create the most fun for them. And if you can plant seeds with the technique, help them learn a little bit so that in that training time they have something to go off of so they can uh, be playful, they can learn, they can explore and have a good time, I think they're going to fall in love with jujitsu. And if they fall in love with jujitsu, then they're going to come back frequently. And if they attend frequently, that is going to build a badass class. Okay. I want to go curriculum. Well, I got this question. We get this question all the time. How do I break down my age groups? Mm. Got it. So we do little tigers four to six, tigers seven to 13. Um, advanced classes are nine to 13. And, and then after that, the teen program is essentially like a transition program where we try and facilitate and guide uh, those teenagers into the adult program. Four to six year olds. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. Okay. How long is that class? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. You said, I'm going to sneeze here somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. uh, you said curriculum. Yes. What type of curriculum does a, does a tiger's, uh, I'm sorry, a little tiger's class look like? So I would more and more, I'm actually learning a lot about this age group over the last few months because I would say for years that I've been a kid's coach, um, that was the age group that I had the least amount of experience with. Okay. And I sought to change that back in December. And so I've been exclusively teaching that age group for a few months right now. And we're in a uh, comprehensive research and development process with the curriculum. Right. Yeah. Um, and what I've learned is that, you know, throughout the age groups, uh, whether they're four or 24, you're teaching them the same jujitsu, right? But you may make modifications based on where they are uh, developmentally or experience-wise, right? Now, I think that there are some five- or six-year-olds who, with enough experience and they're talented enough, precocious enough, uh, to where you could teach them to bear and bolo. But I think on average in the bell, bell curve, like you're probably not going to be teaching that level of jiu-jitsu in your core uh, little tigers class, right? So I would say it looks the same as your your fundamental kids curriculum, like what you might have for your seven to thirteen year olds. Um, but you might make modifications. Like for example, we are teaching them to pull guard right now, and we've actually never ever at Easton taught this age group to pull guard. And so how do you do that? And I've just noticed that at that age, uh, grip strength can be a constraint that these kids have. So grabbing a sleeve grip, for example, when we pull guard, can be difficult for some of the kids. Grabbing the collars, because it's thicker and easier to grip, um, is not as difficult for those age groups. So you may make modifications like those when you teach different techniques just based on the constraints of that age group. But, I, but essentially, the techniques are the same. You know, you're, you're not teaching them different jujitsu. What, uh, okay. You go, Pips. You got a question? You lean, lean, you lean forward. No? Grace You look games. deep in thought. <laughs> yeah, I just want to get more. Ba sure. I, want, I want to, like, give an answer, right? Like, like uh, this is what our curriculum looks like. Like, it's, mm -hmm. the class is broken down like this. Uh, we Like, your Gracie Games. Sure. You've checked out Gracie Games, right? Yeah, I've uh, checked them out. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, what do you think of that style of teaching? Like, you know, do you call it Tiger? You know, mm -hmm. like, like mm -hmm. uh, what, mm -hmm. what is it called? The, the roll and you stay in the mount. It's called something. I can't remember. Oh, like the sneaky mount or the spider kid? The spider Yeah, hands? spider kid. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. You know, like, like, do we like that style of teaching, you know, where it's really play-based and game-based? Yeah, yeah. Like when you're teaching the curriculum, like when I was teaching Little Tigers, uh -huh. you know, they, you know, when they did the mount, mm -hmm. right, they would run over this and jump over that and duck under this. And then at the end of the, at the end, there would be an instructor there, an assistant, and they would hold them out for a minute or they would pull the guard for a minute, like whatever mm -hmm. the technique was. Like, is it, is it that style or is it more partner, partner stuff? What do you, think? what do you mean? Like uh, run over here, jump okay. over this, do I'd that, have, that. I'd have, uh, I have my mat, right. And on yeah. one, end of, one end of the mat, I've had, you know, let's say we have, let's go easy numbers, mm -hmm. uh, 12 kids in class. Mm -hmm. I'd have four lines of three. Mm. Make sense. Mm -hmm. 
I have little obstacle courses set up in front of each line. Mm -hmm. And then you, 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 and you at the end of each line is my instructors. Right. Right. And then you would run through this little obstacle course, like jump over, duck under, spin mm -hmm. around the thing. Right. And then you, when you get to the instructor, you work on, you said guard pull. Sure. You grab the gi, pull the guard. I see. Push him away, get up in base, mm -hmm. run back in line. Yeah. Now the second you get to the instructor, the mm -hmm. other kid starts going. So there's yeah. only like one kid standing for a second, right? Yeah. So it's super play based. They're learning this jujitsu, mm -hmm. but they are running through a fucking obstacle course in their mind. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. totally, totally. So I would say we've evolved away from, uh, we'll just call it like an obstacle course methodology. Like okay. I've seen yeah. a lot of that online where, you know, there's agility ladders and yeah. hula hoops and slides and stuff sure. like that. Um, we, we've moved away from that. Now, in terms of gamifying <clears throat> certain drills to teach them, you know, specific techniques, uh, we absolutely use those as part of the curriculum, Give right? Me an so, uh, so I'll, what we have been doing uh, the last couple of weeks, actually, we've uh, just use the guard pole. Gamify yeah, exactly. Pole. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, what we started with was we actually didn't start by teaching them to get grips and pull guard. We started with guard retention, right? Okay. So we made it a game where the kid on bottom, it was their job to get two grips, right? Any two grips they wanted. And we showed them a variety of grips because some kids did well with two sleeve grips. Some kids did well with sleeve and collar, some well uh, with double lapels. Um, and then, you know, keep two sticky feet on the body, on the belt, right? And we call them sticky feet. Uh, and we make that distinction because otherwise, if you just say, keep your feet on the body, they, they don't quite get it. But when right. you say sticky feet, you know, they get it. So little things like that. So we would set a timer and we would just make it a game. And we'd say, hey, top person, your job is to move side to side, right? And try and get the sticky feet and the grips off of you without using your hands. You can only just move around. Bottom person, you got to hold on with everything you got. And you set the timer for about a minute and you switch top and bottom. Okay. And we did that for about a week. And then in week two, then what we did is we started adding in the guard pull because then they already have this concept of where their hands and feet are supposed to be. So then when they pull guard, they know that like, okay, well, I'm supposed to keep my feet and hands on my partner here. Right, right. And then the following week, we're actually going to pull guard into close guard, okay. right? Right. So right. it's a progression like through. Uh, Makes sense. Exactly. And everything is made into a game. Not everything is made into a game, but the whole class is kind of like turned into this interactive experience, which I could talk about for a minute. Okay. Do you I want wanna, me to walk through that? No, I don't. Okay. I, my question is a warm up for these kids. Yes. What does a warm up look like? So, like, what does the class look like? They come in. Yeah. Right. These this level kids. Yeah. Let me just. I'll just walk through the whole walk thing. Walk through the whole I'll thing. I'll walk through yeah. the whole thing. So we line up at the beginning of the class, right? <clears throat> and what we've started using is we've started using these uh, polyurethane spots on the mats, mm -hmm. right? So uh, while the kids are lining up and we're amping up the kids, like, how are we doing today, Tigers? Good, sir. How are you? We might review our four principles in line. We might uh, Ooh, talk. Hold on. What are oh, our yeah. four principles? Our four principles are focus. Go ahead, what you say? I'm sorry. I was going to say that's almost a separate conversation and we should go through the structure class and then circle back to the four, the, the four principles. This is why you're here. Okay, cool. We'll circle back to the four principles. I don't know anything about coaching kids. Yeah. So that's the only reason I'm here right now. <laughs> yeah, really cool. Okay. Good job. Vince. All right. And you set up the beautiful way. <laughs> Focus, respect, energy, discipline. Okay. All right. So okay. uh, as we're bowing into class, we usually have one of the assistant coaches get a quick head count and then they lay out the spots in a grid, mm -hmm. right? So then we will call the students out to their spots by rank. I'll say, gray belts, go find a spot in the front, right? Because we want the most experienced students in the front yes. of the group warm-up. Why do we do that? And it's a grid-based warm-up. So the kids can see an example of what they are supposed to do. Got it. Because kids are much more likely to copy what they see uh, rather than what you say. Got it. Perfect. So we put the most experienced students in the front, and then I'll go down the line. You know, gray, white belts, go find your spots, mm -hmm. four-stripe white belts, so on and so forth. Uh, so the, the warmups that we are running them through is we do bridges side to side. We do hip outs and hip ins. We do our frame escape drill. We do seated break falls. We do up and base. Little to, kids here. Uh-huh. Yep. We do seated break falls and then we do up and base to standing break falls. And then we do our double leg shot drill. God, it's very you, similar yeah. to the adult warm up. Wow. You like you guys have, we have, since I taught this class, like. 
Oh, major evolutions right major now. Evolutions. Major evolutions. Excellence, bro. We're chasing excellence. I was doing it perfect. What are you talking <laughs> chasing about? Chasing excellence. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. They can and do it. They can do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah it takes go. some time. Like, when you're, when you're starting with a group of kids, uh, they're not going to get that far the first time you run the warm-up. The mm-hmm. first time you run the warm-up, you may spend the whole time teaching them to bridge side to side. Right. But once it becomes part of the culture. And you have an assistant instructor there helping them. Those newer kids. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. We try to maintain a, a one to four ratio in little with that tigers. Little child. With okay. little tigers, right? So that way, like, you imagine one assistant coach per four, four littles, you know, okay. or like two groups. If so, 20 ki- so 20 kids, five coaches. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you need that. Um, so, yeah, they can absolutely do it. And that's the way we look at it is every level of the kids program, how can we prepare them for the next level? So we want to try and keep the uniform, uh, not the uniform, the warm up uniform throughout the level so that the little tigers are learning the <coughs> same warm-up that the tigers are doing it just takes longer so when they transition out of little tigers into the tigers program they have success rather than feeling lost right and that's i think and the really first key. thing they do when they move up to that new level the very first class they have it's gonna be this warm-up and they're like they, they crush it. it they crush it and they're like oh i got I'm a it big tiger now i baby. got it yeah exactly it, it builds confidence they're excited so and we can talk about that transition into yeah. into the in a minute so uh after the warm-up what we do is we call them all in and we have them sit in a structure because it's one of the ways that we teach them uh physical discipline and focus is mm-hmm. they have to be able to sit still for two minutes <laughs> like that's it you know they're four so they're not going to be able to focus for longer than two minutes, but we bring them in. My ten-year-old, <laughs> <laughs> not longer than two minutes. Uh, so we bring them in and we teach them a technique. And the way that we've been teaching them a technique is very, very little detail. I mean, like the the most minimal essential Stinky. details. Yeah, you you chunk it down into like three to five steps max, right? And whatever those steps are need to be something that's easy to call out and have them respond, right? Like uh, if we're teaching them the Americana, we just, we're on week three of teaching the little kids the Americana, right? So we say, uh, we always start by uh, saying the name of the technique out loud, right? So I'll have the instructor come into mount or side control, whatever position we're teaching it from. And I'll say, side control, side control. And then I go, Americana, Americana, two on one, Push, 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 elbow down, under, over, tap, push. That's it, right? And as I'm saying these things, I'm demonstrating it step by step, right? So I usually demo the technique twice through like that, and then I do a little pop quiz. I have the kids walk me through the technique. So uh, I say, okay, I'm inside control. Now what do I do? And they say all sorts of different things, right? But a few of the kids are going to get it right. And when they say the right thing, I'm like, yes, that's it. Two on one. Now what do I do? This is such right? a huge thing with kids. This is such <laughs> a huge thing. They love it. They One, they love it. Right. And two, when, look, I do it with my fighters. Uh-huh. In the corner, I got, you got one minute, right, Phipps? You got one minute to tell someone what to do. If only you talk, it can be, okay, I'm just going to go out there and fuck somebody up. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. You know, yeah. Right? So I go, what do I need you to do? Mm-hmm. Right. They don't say it right. Okay. I need you to, right? Yep. And then once they can, and as long as they're not too fucked up, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> once, yeah. once they can repeat it back to me, I'm like, okay, they heard me. Right. Now, whether we make that happen or not, right? And I'm sure just like the kids' class, yeah, very few of them actually get the fucking Americana on the first go, right? Like you're over there with the assistant instructors. Oh, yeah. Assist- yeah. And you're right. helping them and walking them through. But they're going to get it. Yeah. Out of the submissions we've taught them so far, because submissions uh, right. for this age group is a new introduction to this program, the Americana has been the one they picked up the quickest. Well, it's so well, easy. Even yeah. the Americans can do it. <laughs> right. That's exactly. That's how it got its name. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so uh, after I have them walk me through the technique, then, uh, you know, I have them stand up. And then it's a, it's a team effort to partner up all the kids because just one instructor partnering them up, it takes too long, okay. it disrupts the flow. So all of the coaches, it's a team effort to partner up the kids. Now, while I am teaching technique, what another one of the assistants does, so remember I said we had those uh, polyurethane spots on the mat. Yeah. 
So those spots are all one color and we use blue ones. Uh, we also have a second set of spots that are the same. They're polyurethane spots, but they're orange. So what we do is while I'm teaching technique, the assistants are pairing spots, one blue, one orange, and they spread out enough based on how many students are in class in a circle around the mat, right? Uh, the assistants know that when we pair the students together and we send them to their spots where they're supposed to be, uh, the senior student is on the blue spot. The junior student is on the orange spot. So once they are all in pairs on spots around the edge of the mat, uh, the lead instructor walks to the middle of the circle so that way they can all look in and mm -hmm. view the instructor. Uh, and the instructor walks all of the kids through every repetition. They don't drill on their own. Uh, what I have seen is when you send this age group out to drill on their own without being guided, uh, it's not very productive. Ah, uh, man, fuck this age group. <laughs> fundamentals. Yeah. You can, we even don't even adult send, fundamentals, yeah, in a, right? In adult fundamentals, we don't show the technique and then say, go do it. Right. When we're doing the Americana with fu with adult fundamentals, we, we go, walk okay, so, first, yeah, we, right? literally the same yep. way you're walking the kids. We might not make the same funny noises. Right. You, you know, yeah, for the exactly. Kids, but like, yeah. it's, it's literally the same exact thing. Totally. All right. So you show them this technique. They practice the technique, right? Mm -hmm. You switch them top and bottom. Yeah. And the reason we use the colored spots was this was a, a recent breakthrough was I always had a hell of a time trying to get the kids to understand who was the senior student. Right. So always trying to get them to like who goes first was um, a, a, a debacle, right? right so right. Uh, what I started doing is I would have them look down at their feet and I'm like, if you're on the blue spot, you are the blue tiger. If you're on the orange spot, you're the orange tiger. Got it, so got then it. I would just say, blue tiger, back break fall. Orange tiger, go in the God, mouth. That's fucking genius because that was one of the worst things. Senior, more, more experienced person, lay down. Both lay down. Right, exactly. Or no one lays down. Yeah, whoever has more stripes. What if we have the same amount they, of stripes? And then they go, oh, I got four. How many you got, right? And then half yeah. the time is, right. is, is, is them counting each other's fucking stripes. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, oh. Yeah, so I did this just to keep the flow up. It's right. been working magically. So I walk them through the technique. The assistants are going around right. and helping. Okay. I'm doing the same call and response that I did when I was demoing the technique. They can still see me doing it so they can look if they get confused. You have somebody down and you're doing it too. Yeah, I'm Got doing it, it with okay. them, right? And I might rotate around based on mm -hmm. like, you know, and I'll kind of keep pace and stuff like that. So uh, whatever techniques we're teaching them and now, so we've, we've decided on a formula that we're repeating techniques and little tigers for three weeks at a time now. okay because what we have seen is that that third week is the sweet spot that's okay. when the kids really start to nail it right that's when we see them doing americanas and training and getting taps and getting back up on their feet and it like it takes hold all right, right? how long is this this part of the class so the warm-up is about 10 minutes the drilling is about 15 minutes all right so we're 25 minutes in the class what's yes. the next minutes so now at the 25 minute mark, 25 minutes into class, we go get some water, then we line up to train. And then we train for 10 to 15 minutes and we do 90 second rounds. When's the speech? Uh, the mat chat mat is chat. right there at the end of class, about five minutes before the end of class. Uh, we tell them to thank their training partners, they fix their belts, they come sit down, we do like a two minute mat chat, then we line up, we do promotions, we close out. Got it. Can you can you describe the mat chat? Because I don't think that very many people know yeah, what you mean. When yeah, you say absolutely. Mat chat. Yeah. So a mat chat is is a topic uh, that we want the kids to learn, right? Um, and these are always evolving. But for example, uh, hygiene is a mat chat, right? Where we talk about what is hygiene, right? Um, Coach Emma made this very succinct, and I love it. Don't be stinky. That's the way that the kids can understand what hygiene is. Don't be stinky, right? So how can we not be stinky? Oh, we take baths. We brush our teeth, you know, uh, stuff like that. We wash our clothes. We wash our hands. Uh, you we get a few answers. Keys. Yeah. We just very briefly, in a way that that age group can understand, you explain what it is. You try and include as many of them as possible. The okay. answers they give is hilarious. Uh, and then that's it. And there's just a there's a set of rotating I topics. I don't stick my finger in my butt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> stuff like that. You know, there's all kinds of good stuff. Uh, manners is always a fun one. Like the one little kid was just like, "Oh, good manners is not sleeping in your chair at the dinner table." And I'm like, "Yeah, you know that makes sense." So and then he demonstrates how he sleeps in his chair. And I think but, the amazing part about the mat chat, Jordan, is we have them for you. 
Yeah. No, yeah. we have so all of them. If you, when you, yeah. if you want to do the Easton online thing at any level other than, I think, the onboarding level, mm -hmm. like the, the 100 member boot camp, this is just stuff you get, right? And you mm -hmm. get all of this stuff, mm -hmm. right? You get all of this stuff laid out for you on the back end. And it's just there, right? Like, right. like you don't have to wonder what it is. Phipps, it looks like you got something. Another question about Mad Chats. That's just for the Little Tigers? No, it's for all of the kids uh, and all the programs. So uh, it's the same Mad Chat for Little Tigers as it is for uh, the upper age groups. Uh, in our advanced Tigers classes, like, we don't do Mad Chats. It's more like the adult classes. Well, in our fundamentals and intermediate classes, like, we have, like, a speech of the week, right? Mm -hmm. But once you get to the advanced class, it, it's really up to the instructor to decide what they're going to talk about at the end of that class, right? Okay. And so same thing with our advanced Tigers. But for the little Tigers and the Tigers, so the 7 to 13-year-olds, uh, fundamentals and intermediate, uh, the mat chat is the same. But, you know, the way that you discuss it to, you know, 10-year-olds is different than the way you discuss it to 4-year-olds, right? Like, I'm not going to tell the 10-year-olds, hey, don't be stinky. Like we're actually going to talk about showering after training and like, you know, helping mom and dad with laundry and washing your gi and, you know, uh, right. using your mouth guard, washing your mouth guard and all kinds of things. So do you tell them to wash their belt. Uh, I do tell them to wash their belt. You wash your belt. Let's go. <laughs> Where is all my skills now? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. I mean, look, all my blood I'm not going to. I, I, I don't wash my belt, but I will always tell the kids to wash their belt. Oh, man, I almost butchered it last night in Castle Rock. So I was down there teaching, right? And some, you know, I always, whenever I have a group of new students, I always like give my spiel a little bit, right? And I'm like, man, chase your dreams, dog, right? Like, like chase your dreams to so the whole class. Like adults, eat, like I'm like I don't care how old you are, like get really good at something. And I was like, don't listen to your parents. I was like, oh shit. And the parents, some parents were like right there because there was like some you know twelve year olds. I was like, listen, listen to your parents. Like, I was like shit, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But like, I did not listen to my parents. Yeah. Like my like you know, and and it worked out for me. And mm -hmm. I don't believe in listening to your parents at a certain age. Like. I hope my kids tell me to fuck off. <laughs> what what age do you hope that they tell you that? When they start to be an adult and they start paying for their own shit and they're going to go do their thing, right? Okay. Because like, I'm, I'm going to be scared for them in the world. Right? Yeah. I want them to make sure I won't because I've lived that experience, right? Mm -hmm. But my generation parents, it's get a job, be safe, be secure, right? Like that, that's, what our gen that's what my parents learned. And I was just like, oh, shit. I was like, I don't need phone calls. Please listen to your parents. <laughs> so, I mean, it went fine, but I, I was on my way to butchering it. Got so, it. That's uh, funny. Anyway, Phipps, you, you stopped me from asking a question. What was the question you stopped me from asking? Like, I, we were going down our principles. Uh, so, yeah, the four yeah principles. We, we talk about this a lot. And so, Jordan, I want you to talk about the four principles, what the acronym is, mm -hmm. what they mean, and why they're important. Got it. So the, the four principles in our kids program that we talk about all the time, and these are the ones that we hold up, you know, on the banner, and these are our expectations, right? And that's another way that we can think about it is these are the expectations for our students. So it's focus, respect, energy. Um, another way to think about energy is effort and discipline, right? So we say Fred, right? So for the little tigers, we might say, hey, we got to keep our best friend Fred with us at all times, right? For ages seven and up, I don't quite talk about it like that. I talk about principles. Um, Let me, I'm going to stop you for a second because mm -hmm. we've talked about values too. Mm -hmm. What's the yeah. difference between a value and a principle? Mm, that's a good question. I think the way that I've heard it expressed before is that I want your opinion too on this uh, a value is what we're aiming at. Like it's our North Star and the principles are how we get there. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. So beautiful yeah i think that's what it is mm -hmm. yeah you know you're this is what we're trying to get done right mm -hmm. excellence trust compassion stewardship right the way we do that with the kids is we use fred exactly right we use fred but if the kids have focus if they have what's our respect respect energy and effort and discipline mm -hmm. we will get to excellence we will get to stewardship exactly they will yep. learn how to trust each other and they will be compassionate to their partners and other people so, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that was a great explanation. All right, yeah. get back into Fred. Yeah. So, you know, what I always tell the kids is focus uh, is very important in jujitsu. You cannot do jujitsu without focus. 
And that principle applies to a lot of different things. We have to be focused when we're learning jujitsu. Otherwise, we're not going to absorb the technique. Uh, we have to be focused uh, when we're drilling. Otherwise, we're not going to get better at the technique. We have to be focused during training rounds because we have to make sure that we're paying attention to what our partner is doing so we can defend ourselves. We need to focus and make sure that we see opportunities to do jujitsu. We need to focus <coughs> so we pay attention to our surroundings and our space and make sure we're not bumping into our training partners. And that's important that we get good at that because if we ever get into a self-defense situation, like having these different layers of focus are gonna be really important for self-defense. So you break then each one of these principles down into different ways that they have to use these principles. Absolutely. Respect, effort, energy, right? And I don't think we got to go through all of them, right? But that, sure. But that's what we do. Yeah. And, and, and depending on the age level, you... You speak about you it speak differently. about it differently. Like the little tigers, when I talk about focus, we say, how do we focus with our eyes and our ears? And right? And I tell them like, hey, the one way we can focus with our eyes is you turn your eyes into lasers. I want you to turn your lasers on me and try and burn a hole in my head. And all the kids start staring so hard. You know, it works really well, but I don't say that to That doesn't quite cut it with a 12-year-old. Well, no, not. Right. they just think it's stupid. All right, I have one more question sure. on this kids program thing. I'm going to move on a little bit. Yeah, no right? problem. And I'm sure uh, the structure of how we teach every class, we have all that, right? You yeah. Know, the, this class and that class. Mm -hmm. But it's super important to, before I move on, to have that structure down. I will yes. do this for this many minutes and I will do this for this many minutes. Right. Yes. And it, like, if you don't have these basic things, you're going to teach a really shitty kids class. Right. And it's going to be chaos. Mm -hmm. And then your assistants can't help you. Right. Right. So uh, the la the question that I have now, when we move up to this next age group, seven to thirteen, mm -hmm. that's a big gap. It is it's a big gap. Mm -hmm. Do they all work together, or do we split them on the same mat? Let's say, mm -hmm. like, let's say this is the mat, this table is the mat. Mm -hmm. They all line up together and all of that, right? Because this is what we used to do it when, when yeah. again, this is just when I was doing uh -huh. it. Uh, God, I sound so fucking old. <laughs> that dramatic pause after he said no, that. I, that I, was it. So it was fifth form. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, sorry, you're old. We're so much better than you now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, we'd start the class, we'd all warm up together. Yes. Boom, like, you know, line down the middle like a rope almost, you know? Mm -hmm. seven, to ten, seven to nine over there, 10 to 12 over here. So we don't split by age. Okay. We don't split by age. So what we do is uh, we, we pair them up appropriately, right? Now, it, in general, if you are pairing students, so let me just back up for a second. So when we run the class, we don't split them up by age. We we split them up by rank for teaching technique, Okay. right? So the white belts learn, regardless of their age or size, they all learn the same technique. The gray white belts and up, regardless of their age or size, they all learn the same technique, right? Now, their drilling partner is someone who is relatively their size, which in, in general is relatively their age, right? Begs the question, what happens when you get like a, a you know, Pair everyone up. You got a seven-year-old and a twelve-year-old. <laughs> you do the best you can. Give somebody, give them help. What do yeah, you do? Yeah, you do the best do you can. You make can. a group of three, or do you put the seven and the twelve-year-old yeah, together? Yeah, there's, you know, and well, it just depends on what's available at the time. You know, if you have if, a seven-year-old that looks like uh, Nash when he was seven. Okay. Who's smaller? Right. Sorry, Mal. And you have a twelve-year-old that looked like Kanan when he was twelve. Right. Bigger. Right, and that's all you have. Well, that's what you have left. Let's oh, that's what you have left. Like everyone's paired up. Okay, okay. And you have this little seven-year-old. Well, if I have the little seven-year-old and I have a group of two that are closer to their size, I'm going to put that seven-year-old go in group, of, group three. of three. You're right. not going to go. No, okay. no, 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 no. Now, if I have a class of four and that's all I'm left with, like right. I'm a brand new academy, then you do the best you can. But I will put students in a group of three closer to their size before I put the mismatch together. That was my question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Got it. And then for training rounds, we split by size, right? So uh, I it depends on the size of the class. If you got 50 kids in class, you might have four different size groups. Mm -hmm. Small, medium, large, and super size is what we call them. Um, if you have 20 kids in class, it might just be two groups. It might be smallers and largers, you know? Um, so within those size <laughs> groups, you get all skill levels. And, you know, 
relatively the same age, but you'll get some different sizes in there. But I think it's important that the kids get to train with a mix of skill levels just like adults because uh, the more experienced students, their higher level jujitsu will percolate down to the lower ranks and that will raise the base level. Uh, the less experienced students will get to train with the more experienced students and they will learn from them and they will get a model of what jujitsu can be. Just like adults, right? Like if, mm -hmm. if three stripe white belts only ever trained with other white belts, they would suck, right? They need to be able to train with higher belts. And then there's a... This is why I sucked for a long time. Yeah, well, there's a match. chat. This is why jujitsu sucked for a long time. There's a match chat that I give all the time to the kids. Uh, and I think this is really important to build culture. Um, and I say it takes three people to be the best you can be. You need someone who can teach you. You need someone who can challenge you. And you need someone you can teach. Right, you need all three of those things, and so when you have oh, all nice three of the say, skill levels, instead of saying beat you, you said teach you. It's the same thing, it's but the yes. same fucking thing. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. That yeah, was exactly. great, especially for little kid for kids. Mm -hmm. And if you changed beat into teach, just just that was amazing. Right. Yeah, you're all better than me. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we talk about that all the time, and sometimes before we train. Mm -hmm. I will pre-frame the training with that, you know, especially if we have new students in mm -hmm. class, right? Because that's something to consider is when you have a first day student in a kid's class and you throw them into training on the first day, they don't know shit, no, right? Yeah. And so you need a culture to where those experienced kids aren't looking at that brand new student as an opportunity to show off or beat the piss out of them and show them how good they are and be a bully. They need to see that as an opportunity to teach, mm. right? So it is It is a directive. Is it, it is an imperative that uh, if you are a gray belt and you are partnered with a first-day student, they better be tapping you. Or mounting you. or Right. right they right, better right. be tapping you. They better be <clears throat> taking you down, right? Uh, so sometimes when we have first-day students, I give them that speech and I remind them like, hey, being a black belt partner – is helping your partner become a black belt. And part of that is recognizing who are you in that round. That's a great right. Yeah. Are you, you know, is it is it two yellow belts who have been training together for years? Okay, I want to see y'all go to war. Like I want to see a death match, right? Are you a yellow belt with a first day student? I better see you teaching that student the entire time. And that right? teaching can change. Because if can. you get a yellow belt with a gray belt, mm -hmm. the yellow belt's allowed to beat him a little bit now. Oh, yeah, right? absolutely. Like he's allowed yeah. to start like, putting it on him. So because yeah. so, the teaching is different. It is. But if you're a yellow belt with a white belt, mm -hmm. right? Like the teaching is not like, okay, I'm going to like how we used to do. I'm going to fuck you up to show you how great this is. Yeah. that That's not what it is anymore, right? No. You, we know that that just... It, that kept jujitsu so small. It just demoralized. Just that people. that idea yeah. kept jujitsu so small. Right. And and now we have to do it differently. And and especially with the kids. That was man. If y'all don't take anything away from this podcast, like nothing, take those words from from beat train with people that can beat you. Train with people that can push you, and train with people that you can beat to teach you. Uh, put put. I guess you can keep push you. Yeah. Right? Challenge you. Challenge right. you. Teach you. To you, uh, to you teach, right? Like those mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. the, those are the terms that you should be using with your kids' class. Next season online meeting, we're gonna talk about this for a sec. <laughs> that was great, Jordan. I appreciate it. Awesome. Phipps, any any input here? Anything to add? How long have we been going? Thirty-seven minutes. Seven. Um, so <clears throat> I I don't have too much to add. The mm -hmm. kids are really outside of my wheelhouse. Um. But there's a few things that I've noticed from working really closely with Jordan for a bunch of years yeah. and also observing uh, the kids Muay Thai program at Longmont. And the first one is that uh, the, I love the way Jordan puts this is that like as an instructor, you are putting on what do you say? It's two shows. Oh, yeah. Well, it's it's really it's one show, mm -hmm. but you have to play to the back of the house. Right. Yeah. So in my theater experience, we always used to have. Uh, the director who would go and sit in the back of the theater and, you know, somewhere in the middle of the rehearsal process would just start yelling at you in the middle and be like, I can't hear you. Right. And then afterwards he would be like, look, the guys in the back row pay just as much for their ticket as the people in the front row. You need to speak up so the people in the back can hear you. And the way I like to think about it in the kids classes, it's the people in the back row of a kids class that bought the tickets. Nobody in the front row bought the tickets for the kids' class, right? So and when, when you, you say 
back. You're talking I'm about, talking about the parents. Yes. Right? Because I think a good kids class, I think the best kids instructors don't just teach a class. They make it an experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They make it an inclusive I don't want, experience. I'm not letting you stop with the kids class. Yeah, I it's it's all. Class. Yeah, exactly. Go I'm ahead. just speaking within my yeah, purview yeah, yeah. here. But yeah, I think the best instructors make it an experience. And I think that if you can make it an inclusive experience for the parents to where it's fun for them to be in the room, I consider it a personal failure of mine if I look around the room when I'm teaching or running class and all of the parents are on their phone. Or talking to each other. Or talking to each other. Why am I so boring that the parents don't want to pay attention to what we're doing? Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Why is the class so boring? Why are they not training hard enough? Look, man. When kids are training hard, you don't want to take your eyes off of them. Right. Man, it's it's better than a UFC card sometimes. Like I will I will pump the kids up and say, I just bought tickets for this match, right? And then like they I make a game out of it. I just keep raising the ticket prices the harder they train. I'm like, we're up to five hundred dollars, you know. Um, I don't actually pay them money, but they think it's hilarious. But yeah, so I think that when you are teaching, remembering that you're not just teaching to the kids who are a few feet away from you that you want to make it an experience that includes the parents who are sitting in the back of the house. So play to the back of the house is the way I like to say it. This is the hardest thing for people in their kids program Mm -hmm. is uh, the child is not the client. Correct. Right. The child is not the client. Mm -hmm. Right. So if the client, the mom and dad get sick of this thing here and and let, let not sick of, hold on. As long as their kid wants to come, They'll bring them. Yeah. Right? They'll bring them. If you don't address the parent, if you don't play to the uh, play to the back of the house, the parent, if you don't talk to the parent in your kids' program, all of them, right. if you don't communicate with them, if you don't uh, have regular interaction, Mr. Phipps, how you doing today? How's your day? Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Awesome. You guys just went on vacation, right? Mm-hmm. When did you guys go again? We went to Barbados. We went to Barbados. Let's Whoa. go. Barbados. <laughs> I've never been to Barbados. What's Barbados? Like, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. like if you don't do this, the second his son Jordan wants to quit, they're out. For right. sure. They're gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they are gone. And every single child that walks through your door is going to want to quit. I don't care how good they are. Yep. They are going to come to a point where they want to quit and it's going to be on Mr. Phipps to sell his son Jordan that uh, we're not quitting. Absolutely. And if you don't have the parent, they're gone. Yeah, correct. No, I think you bring up an important point. After every kid's class, uh, what we try to do and what I always do is as I stand by the door, <laughs> And I say goodbye to every kid and parent as they leave after every class, right? And I do not leave my post until all of the kids are gone. And sometimes it takes about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And what I do is on their way out, I praise every kid. And I pay you more for this, right? We pay you more for this? I don't know if anybody pays me more. Oh, do we pay instructors for this? Well, it's so when we pay our instructors. No, you personally, you get paid more for this? No, I don't get paid more. No, no one gets paid more for this. Oh, okay, this is, got it. This I is see part what of, you were getting. This at. is part of the. This is part of the job. No, this exactly. is part of the this job. Is part yeah, of the job. We, this is part of our expectations, and I mean, it's factored in when we're calculating our compensation. Now, and and the reason that it's part of the job, and and I'm trying, we've been trying to stay away from this, but we're going to tie it back to this, and this is why these are so fucking important, is because ep- excellence. Oh yeah, excellence. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. excellence, stewardship, trust, compassion. Those four things. That's why it's part of the job. And if you don't want to do it, it's totally cool. Yeah. Totally fine. Yeah, it's totally fine. You can train with us. You can do whatever you want. You just can't come work with us. Yep. Right. Right? Yeah. You can't come work with us. Mm-hmm. Because that is just not what we do. That's yeah. not part of the product. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. You know? Because you have to care more about the kid's experience than you do what you're getting paid for. Mm-hmm. And then when you do that, it's a really weird thing. You actually just get paid more. Yep. Yeah. That's that's the weird part. Like that's what you got. Yeah. That's what I. Uh, we all, as instructors, as everyone, have to get through our heads as gym owners. It's the reason we don't do contracts. I don't need a damn. And I, we go over this all the time. But you, I, so many people listening are still doing contracts. Mm-hmm. You don't need one. Mm-hmm. You really, really don't need one, because if you stand in front of the door. And you say goodbye 
mm-hmm. to every single kid's kid student and kid's parent and, and the uncle that you've never met before who just brought him today. Mm-hmm. You're just going to have people keep coming. Yep. Exactly. And then you will get paid more. Yep. Right. Just try the other way first is what I'm saying. Right. As and a then, business owner. And you will always, like, if there's ever any kid who is struggling with anything, you're going to find out yes. as you say bye. Yes. Because, I mean, it may be a kid that was like, you know, like, uh, I'll use an example of that. There's this, like, this small uh, girl, you know, who's, she's a savage, but she's a little bit small for her age. Mm-hmm. Gets stuck in the bottom <clears> of mount. Right. So on the way out, I'm like, yo, hey, how did you did you have fun today? How was class? You know, and then the dad says, oh, well, you know what? I think she was a little overwhelmed because she was getting stuck in the bottom of Mount and her arms were getting pinched and stuff like that. And you can see it on their face. Oh, yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And so then I'm like, oh, well, do you have a minute? Let's go on the mats. We're going to work about what to do in the bottom of Mount. And again, and you so, got paid more for this, right? No, I didn't get oh, paid more for this. It. This I'm... is part of the job, man. Loving <laughs> yeah. the kids with everything you got is part of the job. And if you don't want to love the kids with everything you got, then get off my mat. Get off the mat. Um, so, you know, I pull them aside and then it's like, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We're really going to focus on keeping our elbows in and we're going to use our hips and we're going to do this. And then after you give them those tools, their face is, I mean, it completely changes. And then the next day... You see them in class. You check in. How did it go on the bottom of Mount? You know? Go ahead, Phipps. You want to say something? Yeah, well, I think a couple things. Number one, that applies not just to the kids. It applies to the adults program. Yeah. If you're an adults coach, right. like, you have to care about them, right? More than what you're getting paid. Like, that's – and then you will get paid more because more adults will come in. The school will be successful. So, uh, two audiences, right, or playing to the back of the house. That's one thing that Jordan always says. And if you ever see one of Jordan's classes uh, and you're a new instructor, you might be a little intimidated because it's, <laughs> it's a it's show. Intense. It's a freaking show. Yeah, when Jordan's in, in the academy. There's 60 kids on the mat. Jordan's on the <laughs> stage. And, and it's amazing. Um, I think some other things I've seen in the kids program is and Jordan does this when he puts on the show. If you're the coach, you have to be enthusiastic. You have to have energy, right? Because if you don't have energy, if you're like, oh, all right, guys, you bring, have that friend, bring it in. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Bring it in. You know, we're going to look at the mouth. It's like the kids will not pay attention to you. Like they have to feel excited. And that comes from the energy that you project. Um, and so energy is super important for a kid's coach, as well as the structure of class. If mm-hmm. your transitions are sloppy you will lose your kids. Yes. You will lose your kids and they, it'll be very hard to bring them back in. Like the energy, especially in the transitions has to be even higher. And oh, yeah. I, you say I, transitions. We're saying from technique to training, exactly. from, from warm up to technique, from this to match at the yep. transitions need to be smooth. Getting a yes. dr- going off so the mat to get, get a, a drink, drink, getting back on partnering up every little piece. It cannot be sloppy. And this comes a lot down to your system kids. instructors comes a lot down to the assistant instructors. I mean, and you have to have, it's, it's choreography, right? Yep. You know, in, in the theater world, we would call this blocking where it's like, everybody knows exactly where they're supposed to be at every point in the play. And the class mm-hmm. is no different. Like the assistants have to know where they're supposed to be. So, you know, I have a Google slide deck uh, that's available to our Easton online clients. Like that illustrates the choreography of how the class works. But what you do is you choreograph the class you have a meeting in your monthly meeting that you have with your kids team that they are required to be at, which is part of the job. No, they don't get paid more. It's part of the job. Uh, God, this is I, the time. I just rip people off. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, I'll meme you, baby. This we is, just rip people but off. But this is this is how the holistic <laughs> process works, right? In that meeting, you show them the choreography, and then they are all on the same page about where they are supposed to be and what they're supposed to do, and it's part of your onboarding process. You share this with them when they become part of the team and then they learn what to do um, so that the kids then know what to do. And once this becomes part of the culture, it's seamless. Like, you right. know, it runs itself. It's yeah, a when beautiful I watched thing it, it was to amazing. see. It was great to see. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, guys, let's wrap it here. This was a great podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was fun. Was super informational. We'll go Muay Thai next. Okay. Let's go. So that we can, we can talk there. And next time Jordan will have to sit quietly in the corner. Yeah, no, sorry <laughs> about that. No, he kept asking me questions. It's just the way it worked out. No, this, you know? is great. This, yeah. this is what people need. It, it was just the way it worked out. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say that, like this last, that last thing that you said, if you don't love the kid, what, what was it? Man, if you're not loving the kids with everything you got, then like get, get off, off the mat. mat. Like yeah, get just off the mat. don't don't even <laughs> get off the mat. Yeah. 
And that goes for every class. Yes. Right. If you don't love what you're doing more than you love the money that comes with it. Yeah. Okay. Get off the mat. Mm -hmm. Please don't do that to our industry Mm -hmm. because you're ruining it. You're absolutely, I don't care if you teach like John Donahart or not, if you're that skilled, right? Mm -hmm. I I don't care if you never produce a world, man, that so doesn't fucking matter. Not, not even a little bit, but if you do again, it's like, if you do, if you love it more than, than, than you care about these other materialistic things, you're going to get those. You're just going to get those. It comes. I'm not that good of a teacher. I'm good. But I'm not like this rock star. Mm-hmm. I'm good. <clears throat> mm-hmm. You know, I'm all's good. Yeah. We have multiple world champions mm-hmm. at multiple different belts, at multiple different ages. The people will walk through the door. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And, th- and then you get them. It's, and it's not really you, it's them. One thing, one thing I'd like to say before we wrap up, <clears throat> and this is, the, I, I enjoyed this conversation, even though it was mostly <laughs> listening for me, is. Uh, you know, Elliot, you, you taught kids for a long time, mm-hmm. karate, and mm-hmm. then that's how you got started Easton. And every time Jordan would say, now we do this now. And you're like, oh, wow, this is, you do not have to be perfect on day one. Like your program will iterate. It will grow. Just get started and implement some of these principles and get better as you go. We'll do this podcast again of how we teach kids classes in three years. Mm-hmm. And Jordan's going to be like, man, we did it so well. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. That's, yeah. Because that's exactly. what you're supposed to do. Right. Yeah, that's yes. what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, yeah. look, what, what I was doing, it was, the, it was what, the best information around. Exactly. It was the absolute best information around at the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm, let me be super clear when I was saying, oh, I, I'm not sad. I'm stoked. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. I'm stoked. Because I remember when you started following me yeah. up in Boulder. Right. And now you're the one teaching me. Right? Like, that that's the job of a teacher. Correct. Like, I'm not supposed to stay better than you. I exactly. I haven't right. taught a kid's class in seven years. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know? Right. Like, no, I don't stay better than you. you it, like, it's your job. Mm-hmm. That's it. So, yeah. Great job, guys. That was uh, fun. Reach out. If you're under 100 members... If you listen to this podcast and you're under 100 members, we've got an offer for you that you just, it, it's so stupidly good and cheap that just do it and you, you, you'll like quadruple your money. Mm-hmm. Uh, 100 member boot camp will get you to 100 members in three months and there you go. Like literally quadruple your boot camp. It's 500 bucks. Mm-hmm. Like it's not even a sale. I shouldn't even, we shouldn't even, we don't even need Kyle for this, but we have Kyle for this. Like mm-hmm. the offer is so damn good. You get everything. You get our marketing, you get uh, our fundamentals curriculum with that yes like Mm -hmm. um you get two meetings with kyle or derek Mm -hmm. and and that alone is 500 bucks so like what are you waiting for and then hopefully we're really hoping by the time that this podcast launches phipps is going to get mad at me for this that we are going to have our new curriculum launched and ready to go for you to take you through see i told you he's going to get mad at me but we're going to do it we're getting it done we will have it ready (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I like how he just checked his phone like to see what day it is. He's just like, Friday. is this podcast releasing next week? Because uh, is it releasing next week? Eleven days from now, and I think the curriculum should the be curriculum live. shouldn't be done. Yeah, let's fucking go. Hey, hey, let's go. Okay, we got this. Let's go, fellas. That's a wrap. Tell me your Instagram, Mikey Mike underscore Phipps. Jordan's at Easton underscore online. <laughs> okay yeah whatever <laughs> and i am at fire marshal 205 so any one of those three you'll be able to get an answer from us we'll get you pointed in the right direction for that hundred member boot camp for that affiliate curriculum uh whatever it is you want that affiliate curriculum is pretty damn cheap too 199 a month for one member and you get all the stuff that jordan just said was on the back end mm-hmm. of kids program well that's on the back end for jujitsu that's mm-hmm. on the back end for muay thai that's yep. on the back end for your front desk that's on the back end for your marketing that's what we give you all that 199 a month a member if you can't get one extra member a month because of that uh it's a you problem not a we problem we're out